This is the second episode of our series on Africa's business revolution. We are trying to study and understand the opportunities that are, that are available in the continent of Africa. We are trying to determine whether Africa is the next big growth market. Is Africa the next destination for the global money? Is this where money should be directed? Is this where opportunities are now rife for investment? Are we looking at the next big market where the world global economic stakeholders should be directing their efforts and their resources? In our first episode, I already introduced you to the kind of conversation that we have. And I told you that what is happening is majority of people are sleeping on the continent of Africa. And that episode was just to awaken the realization in you that you could be sleeping on the next big opportunity. And the conversation is ongoing on how and why are we saying that? Why do we believe that it is Africa's time? What are the things that we have seen that probably other people haven't seen for us to conclude that Africa is the next big growth market? Now, always remember that companies, organizations that have managed to put their brand in the hearts and the lives of people are those that are usually the first ones to identify an opportunity and to be the first ones to solve those problems and to meet those needs of the people the first time. So if you are looking at building a brand that will remain strong and will be imprinted in the hearts of Africans and Africa in general, then the time is now. And watching this session is going to give you a very, very good insight into understanding this thing. So welcome again. My name is Duncan. This is Channel Ask Dra. We call ourselves a community of the army of smart people. And what we do is that we try to have conversations that will enlighten, that will empower and will educate you, especially on matters of economics, business, and of course, finance and accounting. But today, we are picking up exactly where we left. There are four things that have been determined to be most critical in trying to explain why we believe Africa is the next big growth market. But before we do that, let me give you a history of how economic transformation has happened in the world. The first regions to experience economic transformation was of course Europe and North America. Before the agrarian revolution, Europe and North America had stayed for almost 2,000 years without any significant uh, growth. The wider Asia region also experienced transformation between 1960 and 2015. And then the latest stage of regional economic transformation happened in China, and you all know how that went. In fact, China experienced it the fastest when you compare among all the other uh, regions. But now, guys, since all these other regions have already uh, experienced this uh, significant economic transformation, why do you think Africa is any different? Africa exists in this same world. So if economic transformations are happening across all other regions, a time definitely was to come when Africa will definitely also be part of that conversation. But the thing is this, even without that kind of a justification, Africa itself is already giving insights and it is already showing signs that it is going to transform economically. Forget about the challenges. We all know and we all recognize that Africa has some huge and significant challenges. But the thing is, those challenges are supposed to be encountered and those challenges are supposed to be dealt with. Companies that have successfully been in Africa have already proven that it is possible to run a successful company and organization in Africa and to make commercial sense. Throughout this session, I'm going to give you four of the reasons why we believe Africa is in the middle of an economic transformation and that all resources should be directed towards investing in the continent of Africa because it is the next big growth market. Number one, Africa has a population of over 1.2 billion people and that 1.2 billion people is coming in the midst of this economic transformation that we are talking about. Now, historically speaking, there are only two factors that have been found to influence economic transformation, population growth and productivity. Now, Africa is already meeting the population growth rate. It's already meeting the population growth and the size of the population. Productivity has also been seen to grow because the GDP, the, the GDP of the continent of Africa is growing and it is the second fastest growing GDP in the world after Asia. 
So one of the factors that is being used to determine that Africa is the next growth market is the population. It is over 1.2 billion and it is it is estimated that it will double by 20. The number two reason there are already existing multinationals and large companies in the continent of Africa that have tried and tested and that they have succeeded. That alone is a very good reason to show you that it is actually very possible to run a very successful commercial entity in the continent of Africa. Number three, we have the fact that across all the regions, the most unfulfilled region in terms of the demand is Africa. When you look at around the world, Africa has the most unfulfilled demand. That means majority of the people, the things they demand or the things that they want to be satisfied, majority of it is not being satisfied in the continent of Africa. And predominantly because the service providers, the commodity providers are not sufficient and they are not as diversified as they should. Isn't that not an opportunity, guys? And then finally, the number four reason is that there is already a blueprint of a strategy that you need to apply for you to succeed in Africa. With those four reasons, guys, it is very possible that Africa is the next growth market. But today, let's only dwell on the number one, the population. I have told you two factors affect economic transformation of regions. When you look at the 1820s Europe and North America, when you look at the 1960s Asia, when you look at the China of 1970s, two things stand out. There was significant growth in population. And then number two, there was significant growth in economic pro productivity. So translate the same thing into the continent of Africa. We are experiencing that the population is projected to double, while at the same time the economic growth rate has been shown to be growing significant. Between uh, 19 80 to 1990 it was growing at 2 percent but between 2000 and 2010 it was growing at 5.4 percent but it is now averaging almost 7 percent with that kind of transformation with that kind of growth automatically you can see that this economic productivity is increasing because that is real economic growth with that in mind there are some specific standout characteristics that present africa as a potential growth market and i'm going to mention various characteristics that has already been observed by, of course, uh, studies, by research, and by observations by business executives and leaders also. And one of the things they have said is that by 2025, just a year away, Africa will be consuming almost $5.6 trillion in consumption spending. Now, guys, that is significant. If that number does not excite you as an investor, then what else will? Because you want people to spend money. If you're going to set your company up, you want a market that is spending. Number two, the population is going to double by 2050. Africa has 11 million square miles of land, and that is almost three times the size of Europe. So if the population is increasing with that kind of land size, and that land size is, good, is put to good use, can you imagine the amount of productivity that can be gotten out of that? Africa has over 400 companies that is making $1 billion in revenue per year. There are over 400 companies that are already making $1 billion in a year. If it wasn't really a formidable market, if it wasn't really a hot market, will that be happening? Will these companies even be existing in the continent in the first place? So that is already showing you the kind of market that you're dealing with. There are 122 million, over 122 million active users of mobile financial services. And I think mobile financial services in the world is leading in Africa, of course being led by the country of Kenya. That alone should tell you something. There is a need, there is a deep desire for better services that can enable transactions to happen faster and for people to receive services better and quicker. And that is why you see all this uptake, financial services. And you see, financial services do not exist in an area where there is no economic activity or the economic activity cannot justify. So the fact that there's a significant increase in mobile financial services already shows you there's a deep desire for business people to transact with consumers. And that should give you Good signs. Also, it is projected there will be 89 cities in Africa that has over 1 million inhabitants soon in the continent of Africa. That is rural urban migration. There is a lot of urbanization in the continent of Africa. And you know urbanization comes with consumerism. So automatically, if you're having over 89 cities that with over 1 million people, you can imagine the kind of market that those cities will create. If you start to look at Africa since the turn of the 21st century, between 2000 and 2008, there has been a lot of diversification in services. 
historically countries that had oil and natural resources were of course deemed to be countries that are in a better position in come in terms of economic growth and transformation but there has been a lot of diversification that means that even countries that do not have oil or natural resources have already shown very strong performance when it comes to tourism financial services transport telecommunication and construction and that has already even been seen in terms of when there was an economic downtime uh, between 2011 and 2015 of course that was caused by the arab spring and of course the drop in oil prices the countries that were not part of that experienced significant still continued to experience significant growth of course being spurred by financial services tourism and transport so that already tells you that africa is already diversifying from over reliance on natural resources and over reliance on on oil for it to even continue growing steadily and that has been seen by the optimism that has already been shown in the market by some specific players there's a lot of research that was done by mckinsey and mckinsey said that they have interviewed thousands and thousands of executives they have even interviewed ordinary citizens across the continent of africa and they have done their own research and they came up with the following findings that most african households will join consumer class in the next 20 years consumer class is where you want most people to be you want people to be consumers so that they create demand and already the findings are showing that most households in africa in the next 20 years will be consumers so why can't you then start setting up infrastructure to meet that consumer demand rising investments in digital technology and natural resources will boost development so the development of africa is going to even get better because of course of the investment in digital technology and the investment in digital technology in africa is happening now that kind of infrastructure is being set up now and therefore that is going to definitely transform the continent of africa because the digitization of processes of services is not yet at the best level in africa compared to the average globally so that tells you this is the time that this whole thing is happening and when that is happening of course a lot of opportunities will be created out of it and also african based companies all the companies that are setting up or have set up in africa have already shown that they are expecting that their their revenues will grow significantly and they are also having plans to expand now if those existing companies did not have an understanding of what is about to happen wouldn't they have closed but the reality is that they are expanding in fact they are looking at newer better regions for them to expand in half more than half of the global growth rate is expected to be driven by of course india uh, southeast asia china and the continent of africa but what has been observed is that among all those regions africa is the one that has the most unfulfilled demand what that means is all these other regions are are doing well even though yes they will drive the global economic growth but majority of the demand has been met to some good extent but in africa there's a lot of demand that has not been met and that is what is being considered as the next potential growth market now guys i have talked a lot about the opportunity but we are also recognizing that this will only manage to happen if certain things are done progress always has milestones and those milestones have to be achieved if we don't achieve those milestones then we still face a significant challenge in us experiencing the transformation that we are talking about one of the challenges that has been identified is we have to increase sustainable urbanization guys if you have been in african cities you know how african cities are growing they are growing very fast but unsustainably the up- rural urban migration is significant but the resources everything else is not adjusting accordingly therefore the urbanization the urban cities even though we might have over 89 cities in africa in it might not be sustainable if we don't expand we have to accelerate infrastructure development if you are having that kind of rural urban migration infrastructure has to increase and to grow accordingly and then finally we have to deepen regional integration integration is at the center and that integration has actually been confirmed by some of the economic blocks that exist in africa the east african community that has almost six countries the south african development community that has almost eight countries has proven that the moment those economic blocks were made operational the growth rate has almost increased by around 15% average growth rate of the regional block is it that something to be proud of and is it that something that needs to be encouraged more countries in africa to integrate and to work 
together. And some countries are already doing that. Some countries are already doing that by opening up their countries. They're already creating, improving the ease of doing business within their countries. We have countries that have already put a maximum period by which getting a certificate or cert uh, permits to open up a business has a specific period of time. I think in my country, Kenya, it is very clear right now to set up a company and to know when you can start operationalization is very, very clear. The fees, government fees are now very clear. Everyone knows that if you're setting up a company, this is what I need to pay. And we have countries that have even extended their custom hours. So countries like Rwanda, they're already expanding the customs hours so that you know exactly that if you go there, you'll, you'll be served. They have even come up with something called a one-stop center for investors. I think one of the hardest things as an investor is when you go to a country and you are trying to set up a business and to start operations and you don't know where to start until it ends. Can you imagine a country setting up a one-stop shop where everything will be done there and you are good to go? That is what Rwanda has been able to do. Those are some of the countries that are already to jump above those milestones and roadblocks that will not enable African continent to achieve its growth rate. This episode was basically to explain to you the first fact, the first factor that we believe that makes us believe Africa is transforming, that Africa is transforming as a continent economically and that historically, based on the historical transformation that we have seen, it is Africa's time now. And any person who has interest in Africa must start strategizing now. The next episode is to look at the companies that already existing in Africa and what they did and what they have been able to do. How did they succeed? We want to use that as a blueprint, as an example to show you that you see these companies, they have already succeeded. If this content sounds like something that captures your attention and you will want to hear and watch it over and over again, could you please just click that subscription button? Could you just be a member of this army of smart people and join us? There is a lot more content for you. You are just not ready. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for liking. And I hope to see you again on the next episode as we try to review the successful companies in Africa.